Welcome back to Blackthorn Prod. I'm Noah. So on my channel, I made quite a few AI tutorials, such as getting an enemy character to chase after the player, or make an enemy try and detect the player with a line of sight. Well, in this video, I'll show you how to swap AI behaviors. In other words, easily get your enemy or NPC go from a chasing state to a patrolling state, or from a patrolling state to a idle state, for example. So as you can see here, I have a little player character and an enemy. When I hit the space, key the enemy will run after the player and when I hit space again he'll stop chasing the player and instead patrol around the map. I can press space again and he'll return to his chasing the player state. I can also hit I and he'll stop moving altogether and simply stand idle. So as you can see this is pretty cool stuff. This is especially nice for more complex enemies that react to what the player is doing or their current situation and go from an offensive behavior to a defensive one for example. This may also be useful for a mighty boss character that has multiple behaviors and attack patterns. With that said, to achieve these swapping behaviors, we will be using something called state machine behaviors. Now that might sound complex, but you'll quickly find out that it really isn't. So for now I have my player character that can move around the scene, and my enemy that stands doing nothing. Let's get this enemy going from his idle state to a chasing the player state. So I'll select my enemy character and head over to the animator window. As you can see, this enemy character has three animations. An idle animation, chase, and patrol. Note that if you have never used the animator window before and know nothing about it, I highly recommend you check out my tutorial on the animator before continuing with this one. Okay, with that said, I'm going to make a bool parameter called is following. And then I'll right click on my idle animation box, choose make transition and make a transition between the idle animation and the follow animation. I'll now add a condition stating that I only want to go from my idle animation to my follow one if is following is equal to true. I'll make another transition going the other way, checking if is following is equal to false. Because if it is, we obviously want to go back to the character's idle state. Now I'll select my follow animation and in the inspector, I'll click on this add behavior button. I'll call this behavior follow behavior and open it up inside of Visual Studio. Now here you'll be greeted with a bunch of comments. I'll start by removing the forward slashes on these first three functions. I can also remove these comments. Basically, this acts as the start function, meaning that as soon as the enemy starts playing his follow animation, this function will get called. This acts as the update function, so as long as the enemy is playing his follow animation, this function will get called every single frame. And lastly, this function will get called once when the enemy character stops playing his follow animation. So I'll create a private transform variable up here called player and set that equal to the position of my player character in this onstage enter function. And then in my onState update function, I'll get this enemy character charging straight at the player. To do so, I need to type animator.transform.position is equal to vector2.move towards. And then in the parentheses, I'll state the enemy's current position, so animator.transform.position, his desired destination, so player.position, and at what speed he'll move between these two positions. So I'll make a public float variable called speed and use that for the third parameter of this function. Not forgetting to multiply everything with time.delta time. Heading back into Unity, I'll type out a value for my enemy's speed. Make sure my player has the player tag so my enemy finds him and hits play. And you'll see that the enemy is still not chasing after the player. That's because is following is always equal to false. So this transition here is never activated. To fix this, I'll select my idle animation box and add a behavior to that called idle behavior. In it, I'll simply check in my onState update function if I hit this space key. If I do, then I'll type animator.setBool is following is equal to true. And there we go. Now I can hit play, then hit the space key and my enemy will go from his idle state to his following the player state. I can of course get him going back to his idle state by simply checking inside of my following behavior script if I hit the space key. If I do, then I'll set is following equal to false. And you'll see that I can hit space, get the enemy following the player, 
and then hit space again and the enemy will stop in his tracks. So to recap, this following behavior script only works when the enemy is playing his follow animation and the idle behavior only works when, you guessed it, the enemy is playing his idle animation. Okay, I'll now make another bool parameter called is patrolling and make a transition going from the enemy's follow animation to the patrol animation, checking whether is patrolling is equal to true. I'll then create a transition going from patrol to follow, getting this transition to only work if is patrolling is equal to false. Okay, I'll now add a patrol behavior script to my patrol animation. On that script, I'll quickly get the enemy randomly moving around the map. And now I can also make an if statement, checking whether I hit space on my keyboard. If I do, then I'll set is patrolling equal to false, in which case the enemy will switch back to his follow the player state. And in the follow behavior script, I'll check whether I hit P, for example, on my keyboard. And if that's the case, I'll set is patrolling equal to true. This way, my enemy character will switch back to his patrol behavior. And now, if I hit play, my enemy will start in his idle state. I can then hit space and he'll chase after the player. I can then hit P and he'll start randomly moving around the scene in his patrolling state. And I can of course hit space again, and he'll go back to his follow the player state. Finally, hitting space while in this follow state will get my character going back to his harmless idle state. Awesome. So as you can see, by using animation transitions and adding behaviors to your various animations, you can quickly get your enemies and NPCs changing behaviors. You can also use this to get your character playing a particular sound effect when he plays an animation. For example, maybe you would like the enemy to let out some vicious war cry when he starts playing his follow animation. If that's the case, you could easily do so in the onStateEnter function. Or perhaps you would like the enemy to spawn some particle effects when he leaves his idle state. Again, you could do so using onStateExit function inside of the idle behavior script. Yeah. Heck, you can even use this for your player character. For example, say the player has a special ability where he can fly. You can, as a result, add a fly behavior to the player's flying animation, giving the player the ability to fly. So hopefully this little tutorial has opened your eyes to the possibilities of state machine behaviors. As you probably noticed, I ignored these two functions due to the fact that they're a lot less commonly used. And I hardly talked about what all this stuff does and means, which means that it's very likely I make a part 2 state machine behavior tutorial in the near future, just like I'm planning on making a ranged combat tutorial part 2. In the meantime, if you enjoyed this tutorial, hitting the like and subscribe buttons would be awesome. You can also support me and my channel financially via Patreon, like these top supporters. With all that said, stay tuned, have a great day, cheers!